The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, from coast to coast, in every state in the Union, present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples. If any of them say the secret word, uh, they'll win $100. The word tonight is clock. Okay, Doc, you're excused. Uh, Groucho, we invited some dancing instructors to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Ann Reardon. Her partner is Mr. Bill Eddy. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Ann Reardon and Bill Eddy. Ann, uh, you're a dancing instructor, it says here, huh? Yes. Where are you from, Annie? Well, I was originally from St. Louis, and <clears throat> I lived in Chicago, but I've been out here since I was 12 years old. In other words, Annie doesn't live there anymore. That's right. Are you single? Yes. Mm hmm I hope I'm correct in guessing you're not engaged. Am I uh, correct? Yes. Are you busy tonight? Yes. You say yes? Yes. Tomorrow night? Yes. You said yes four times in a row. You realize that? Yes. Apparently, the answer is still no. <laughs> Bill Eddy, that's you, huh? Yes, I don't care sir. how many times you say yes. <laughs> Bill, are you married? No. Engaged? No. If you found the right girl, would you like to get married? Mm, yes, I think I would. Can you support a wife, Bill? Well, reasonably well. You're walking on quicksand, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you work? I work for the Bank of America in Glendale, Maine office. Oh, you work at the Bank of America, and congratulations. <laughs> this is better than striking oil. <laughs> Bill, what do you think of Anne? And be candid as you like. You know, you're among friends. Well, on such short acquaintanceship, I think she's a very lovely and charming girl. I haven't seen a banker pay that much interest since the boom of 87. <laughs> what do you do at this bank, uh, Bill? I'm a lending officer. Oh. I accept applications for loans from individuals and companies, investigate their credit background, employment, verify their salary and length of employment, etc. Would you lend me any money? Well, are you gainfully employed? I won't know till the show comes out. <laughs> what else would you want to know about me? Well, I'd have to know your salary, how long you'd been employed, your prospects for future employment, what you wanted the money for, etc. You know what I want the money for. <laughs> I've often wondered about banks with all that money around. How do they know you fellas won't take home a few samples? Well, the uh, bank conducts a very thorough investigation and uh, ascertains our honesty before we're employed. That's not important. They better make sure you're honest after they hire you. <laughs> Isn't there some little way an employee can make an honest mistake, like slipping a couple of thousand under his toupee? Well, uh, Be honest, isn't there? Well, a teller could go out to lunch and take a couple grand with him and not come back, but it wouldn't be long before his absence was noticed, and he'd be caught eventually. Yes, but by this time, he'd have had the lunch. <laughs> well, apparently, you've been giving this some thought anyhow, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and you may have your honeymoon in Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Bill, by the way, I know the Bank of America is a very big bank. It happens I've got $32 there myself. <laughs> now, just between us, what assurance do I have that this money is safe? Well, uh, all deposits up to $10,000 are assured or insured by the federal government in Washington. Mm, that's my guarantee. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that the federal government is about $280 billion in the hole? <laughs> And that's after they collected Crosby's taxes. <laughs> Let's talk about you, Ann. Where do you do your dancing? The Arthur Murray Studio on Wilshire Boulevard. Oh, Arthur Murray. Oh, I know him very well. As a matter of fact, I was on his show a few weeks ago. Did you see it? 
No. You didn't, huh? What are some of the common faults you find among men dancers besides their desire to stay you to the back porch as soon as possible? Oh, among the many faults, they're the kind that dance, so what we call side saddle, you know, off to the side so they can peer around your shoulder. Why do they want to look around your shoulder? Well, I don't What's just... going on back there? Huh? <laughs> See where they're going. And, uh, oh, the kind that, oh, the talkers, you know, always... Talkers? They always... tell you that their wife doesn't understand them? No, they count all the time. They count? Yes, yeah, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. All the time in your ears. <laughs> and you think you could teach this guy anything? Oh, I'm sure I could. <laughs> well, uh... When do you think you get together with her just to kind of talk things over, huh? Well, uh, we discussed this a little bit before the show, and we decided that if uh, we want any money, why, we might get together after the show and talk it over a little bit. This was, uh, you knew this all the time when I was uh, talking to her? Wait, at the beginning, huh? Yes. Uh -huh. Like a cat playing with a mouse, huh? Well, she gave the right answers. Yeah. It was more like a rat playing with a mouse. Huh? <laughs> You two have already gotten together, huh? Well, I swan. Huh? Gosh, I haven't swanned in years. <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't spend all his time foreclosing mortgages. <laughs> well, you're a very attractive couple, and Anne or Bill has trouble carrying you across the threshold. After you marry, don't worry. Do what I do. Let the Bank of America carry you. <laughs> now, let's see how much money you can win. You beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. Now, let's see. Uh, you select a general information quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Mm -hmm. you go for 70? Okay. Work up from there. 70, eh? 70 done. All right. In a matrimonial, a general information quiz. In a matrimonial sense, what is a Benedict? It's me. Benedict. Might as well guess. It's a ring. We've got to give a ring. Okay, go ahead. Is that the fellow that gives the ring to the groom? No, that's a married man, usually newly married. Well, that's... Nice. Single, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, uh, what question do you want? Well, we you still got lots of chances. Mm -hmm. 80, 60, 80, 100, 60. anything. 60. 60. What kind of a business establishment would you associate with a mortar and pestle? A plaster. Okay, go ahead. A plasterer? Oh. Either a drugstore or a pharmacy. Or pharmacy. Ooh, that's the thing he grinds it up in. That's right, yeah. Well, we're not doing what's it done. Now, well. Yeah. So now what do you want? Let's go for the 50. Okay. You can't get too low. Okay. 50. 50. According to Mother Goose, who went to bed with one shoe on? This will have to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> See, a married man with children would know this. Well, I know. It's Diddle Diddle Dumpling. My son John went to bed with his stockings on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Diddle Diddle Dumpling, my son John. You see, you have to have children. Yeah. Remember that. Now then, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. What question are you going to go for? Should we go low or try for a big one? Eighty? Eighty. Eighty dollars. Eighty What do you call a freshman at West Point? Plebe. Plebe? Plebe is right. At least you have eighty dollars. <laughs> This is the California desert, a real desert of deep, loose sand, treacherous, soft shoulders, blistering heat. And this is a lovely 1954 DeSoto Automatic on the desert road. Now watch. We're driving this DeSoto Automatic out into the sand. In an ordinary car, it would be almost impossible to move or steer in this type of sand. Watch this, though. The world's newest and finest fully automatic transmission, power flight transmission, lets the DeSoto Automatic accelerate smoothly, steadily, evenly with great power, even here. And steering is simple, even through heavy, treacherous sand, with DeSoto full-time power steering. The power steering that works for you all the time, makes turning the steering wheel as easy as dialing a phone. There are hundreds of reasons why this lovely 1954 DeSoto deserves the name automatic. Reasons you should discover for yourself. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer soon. 
see and drive the beautiful, stylish, distinctive 1954 DeSoto Automatic. It's available in two full series, the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the brilliant Power Master 6. Convince yourself that this year, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. Well, now we have a young lady with an interesting job, Groucho. Her name is Shirley Lestelle, and her partner is Mr. Charles Sandoval. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. There's one of them out front. <laughs> Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a, it's a common word, something you see every day. Let's see, Charles uh, Sandoval and Shirley Lestelle, eh? You're Shirley, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, Shirley, you don't mind my calling you Shirley on such short acquaintance, do you? Not at all. What did you say? I said I don't mind you calling me Shirley. <laughs> do you always talk that way? Well, I guess so. My voice uh, didn't change as I grew up. Oh. It's lucky your voice didn't change. Otherwise, I'd be calling you Sam. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, how old are you, Shirley? Twenty-five. Twenty-five? Yes. Ah, uh, you're fine looking there. Mr. Charles Sandoval, is that that's you? Huh? Yes, sir, that's I can't help but notice that patch over your eyes. Is that anything serious? No, sir. The bright lights uh, hurt my eyes. Oh. Is your chin sensitive to light, too? Uh... No, sir. <laughs> Where are you from originally? I was born in the uh, city of San Salvador in the Republic of Salvador. Oh. Well, why did you leave San Salvador? Did you get tired of bananas? No, there was a revolution in 1929, and my father thought it would be a good time to leave the country. You mean he let a little revolution scare him? Was no, he a coward? No, no certainly not. Uh, he was a president. <laughs> well, the job blew up in his face, huh? I don't blame him for quitting. There's not much chance for advancement in a job like that. <laughs> Shirley, let's get back to you. There's one question I have not asked. Uh, you, uh, you are married, huh? Yes, sir. Do you have any outside interest, Shirley, or do you spend all your time keeping house? Oh, no, I work for a paper mate pen company. I have for the last two years. Oh, well, what do you do mm -hmm. as a paper mate? Well, uh, right now uh, I'm uh, uh, in, uh, doing the uh, first assembly. I've done um, fillers, first assembly, final assembly, inspection. Now, what's a filler? A filler is the... And that's uh, a fellow you were married to. I don't mean him. Well, a filler in a paper mate pen is the... Is the uh, the little inside that you write with. <laughs> That's what you buy when you run out of ink, but it doesn't happen very often. Uh, only when you write, I guess, huh? About 70,000 words there. Uh, there is. I don't know that many words. Well, <laughs> suppose I were to buy one, how would I know if it was any good, assuming that I did buy one? Well, it would be good if you bought it because each pen is, is tested. We've got uh, 20 girls. You test them underwater? No, on paper. Uh -huh. We have uh, 20 girls that, that, uh, that ride Johnson all day long. Johnson must get an awful lot of mail, huh? <laughs> Why do they write Johnson? I happen to know Johnson. He can't even read. Besides that, he's a married man. Well, Does Mrs. Johnson uh, get wind of this? No, but Johnson has all the necessary loops and swirls and straight lines. If you think Johnson has them, you should see Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> well, I've an experience talking to you two. But I'm sure you'd be much more interested in winning some money, wouldn't you, Charlie? That's right. So let's play you bet your life. Beat our other couples, you'll get a chance at the big money later. The banker and the dancing instructor won $80. And the secret word is clock. All right, now let's see how much money you can make. You selected science and medicine. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want? Ten dollar one, eighty, hundred? Talk it over, your partners. Good enough. Sixty, please. Sixty. What is another word for vertigo? Vertigo, dizziness. That's right. Off to a good start with sixty dollars. By Jove, that was right, Charlie. <laughs> now, what one do you want? Okay. Seventy. Seventy. What do you call the colored part of the eye? The pupil. The colored part of the eye is the retina. Right. Now, the boat's gone, Charlie. It's the iris. Oh. 
You, you still have sixty dollars, however. <laughs> now you have sixty dollars. Now what do you want? We'll try the eighty dollars. Eighty? Okay. What is the common word for clavicle? Clavicle collarbone. That's right. We now have one hundred forty dollars. Now what do you want to try? Is your last chance to beat the other couple? Ninety. Ninety. Ninety? What is the science that deals with birds called? Ornithology. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> and you wind up with two hundred thirty dollars. Thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. That one fellow out there. Now, before we proceed, I have a telegram here I want to read. This is the Groucho Marx, NBC Hollywood. Now, we rarely do this. This is the wire. 500 radio and TV editors participating in the annual motion picture Herald. 500 radio and TV editors participating in the annual motion picture Herald and Fame Magazine poll have voted George Fenneman the best announcer in television. Uh, thanks, gentlemen, thanks. George, get your head out of the clouds and tell us who's next. <laughs> All right, Roger, we have a, a guest tonight from down under. He's Mr... And don't ask for more money. You're just wasting your time. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, we may cut your salary. <laughs> we, uh... that you have these encomiums. <laughs> what? Encomiums. <laughs> we have a guest tonight from down... <laughs> this fellow went to Stanford, and I went to reform school, huh? <laughs> E C O M I U M S. Something like that. We uh we have a guest. E, e Combe. <laughs> Look it up when you get home. I'll George. do that for sure. Look under uh, E. E. We have a guest tonight, uh, Gracho, from down under. Mr. Uh, Ethel Smurden. Where is he in the subway? <laughs> well, uh, you'll see in just a minute, I think. Mr. Ethel Smurden is his name, and his partner is a Hollywood pioneer, Miss Mary Sackett. So folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Ethel Smyton. Oh, come now, you just made that up, didn't no, you? No, no, no. My name is Ethel. That's a Scotch Ethel? name. Hmm. Well, why aren't you in a gas tank? <laughs> oh, well, Ethel, you see, is the male equivalent for Ethel, the girl's name. Oh. How about Smyton? Smyton, well, you know, that... What kind of a name is Smyton? That's old English, Devonshire. My grandfather came from South Devon. Oh. Now, where are you from, Mr. Smyton? Oh, I'm from Auckland. Auckland? Well, that's right across the bay from San Francisco, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, Groucho. Auckland, A-U-C-K-L-A-N-D. I don't care how you spell it, it's still across the bay from San Francisco. <laughs> Why do you assume this uh, dialect if you're from Auckland? Well... Actually, uh, have you ever heard of New Zealand? New Zealand? Mm. Have you ever ho heard of Ecomium? <laughs> no, frankly, I haven't. Well, that's right across the bay from Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk to you, uh, okay, Mrs. Sackett? Miss Sackett, you please. Miss Sackett? Thank oh, I'm, you. I'm terribly sorry. No, you may be sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> day for me, sir. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not sorry, uh, Mrs. Sackett. Are, are you a spinster, huh? I'm a spinster from Choice. From Choice. Is that near Oakland? Uh? <laughs> Where were you born? Uh, in Suffield, uh, Connecticut. In Connecticut, huh? Uh, oh, you're across in the alley from the town hall, opposite the town park, with the town cigar factory in the backyard, the family orchard in the family garden on my granddad's Connecticut seed leaf tobacco farm, 10 miles from Springfield, Mass, 16 from Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, if you would dispose of the cigar, I'll thank you. Ha, ha, ha. 
I'm not going to light it. Can I just hold it? <laughs> no, I don't like to look something. Well, how do you feel about me, Mary? Oh, you look all right, perhaps, if you leave a cigar alone. Okay. Does anyone have a fine <laughs> Boy, am I getting pushed around tonight. <laughs> Like the old rigs around here, will you? Uh, how old are you, Mary? 78 years. 78, will you? <laughs> you're certainly spry and chipper. Mary, how do you account for the fact that you're so young looking at 78? What do you do to keep in condition? Oh? You don't smoke cigars, huh? I neither drink, nor smoke, and, uh, I take breathing exercises. Could you breathe a little for us, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, how about stepping over here, Mary, and, uh, and do a few of those exercises for us, huh? This is a slow breath. Well, that was quite a demonstration you put there, uh, Mary. You, what else do you do to keep healthy? I walk and uh, talk. Yes, you talk very well. Huh? <laughs> talk me out of a cigar. I know that. <laughs> well, let's play you bet your life, huh? You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. Our second couple leads with $230. Now, you two have to decide on one answer between you on all these things. Let's see how much money you can make. You select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what question do you want to start with? I think we'll take about uh, number eight. How's that? Number eight? Mm. The $80 one? Is that all um, right with you, man? All right. If I was right with him, it would be all right with me, I expect. To so what country does Greenland belong? Iceland. Uh, no, it's Denmark. All right, now you got three more chances. Say 70. 70. What is the capital city of Alaska? Anchorage. Mm. No, it's Juneau. What one do you want now? <sighs> Come on, what do you want now? 50. Let's go the big one. You've got nothing to lose so far. Uh, yeah, we'll go 100. 100? We've got to yeah. get together. <laughs> <laughs> What is the largest state east of the Mississippi? Largest? Now, you're from the United States. What's the largest state east <laughs> of the Mississippi? <laughs> Texas. Isn't that... Texas is right. Isn't east. Oh. Isn't that just like a man? Well, it's Georgia. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? You want a $90 one? A $10 one? No, we'll go to the house. Well, it's all right with you if we go the 100? It's all right with you? No, me. you've had the 100. You oh. can go had 90. The... Ah, all right, we'll go 90. All right? All right. In which of our states do you find Shoshone Falls? S-H-O-S-H-O-N-E. They're higher than Niagara. Come on, it's yours. I don't know. Come on, you. What do you think? Well, I've had Niagara Falls. is no, up by the... New York. Yeah. Mm. No, but this is, uh, <laughs> this is in the West, and they're higher than Niagara. Oh, higher than Niagara. That's yeah. an Idaho, is it? That's right, Idaho. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll wind up with $90. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you didn't leave here broke, Mary. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And that means our second couple, Shirley Lestelle and her partner, Charles Sandoval, with $230 in just one moment, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Before they come back, George, I want you to give our friends the word on the Groucho Special used car campaign. The Groucho Special campaign is a tremendous success. Friends, take a good look at this sticker. So many people have gone to their DeSoto Plymouth dealer for a good used car and said, Groucho sent me, that your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is doing something extra for Groucho's fans. He's taken the best used car bargains he has and put this sticker on the windshield. 
marking the car a Groucho Special. These Groucho Specials are unusually good cars, especially priced to make them the hottest values in town. You see, the overwhelming popularity of the 1954 DeSoto means that your DeSoto Plymouth dealer has obtained some really great used cars in trade. Many of them are late model, one owner cars. The very best will be the ones he selects as Groucho Specials. So don't miss out on this great opportunity. Tomorrow, first thing, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and look for the used cars with this sticker, the Groucho Special sticker, sign of a used car that's a really outstanding buy. There may be one that's just the car you've been looking for. It's the Groucho Special sticker, your dealer's way of showing you a real used car value. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Groucho, here comes our winning couple, the man from San Salvador and Shirley Lestel, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Right in there. All right, for $3,000, I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. One of the most famous of Greek legends concerns Jason and his quest for the Golden Fleece. The sailors who accompanied Jason had many wonderful adventures. For $3,000, what were these sailors called? It is a word still used frequently. Talk it over. I do not. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Argonauts. Argonauts is absolutely right, huh? Wow. $3,000, and that was a tough question. How much did they win the quiz, George? Uh, $230 in the quiz. Which gives them 32, uh, 32.30. Congratulations from <laughs> the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thanks. Remember that the dealers who sell the dramatic and remarkable 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission. Also sell the new 54 Plymouth, engineered and built better to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see a DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and see the 1954 DeSoto Automatic. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America, who also bring you the outstanding new dramatic program, Medallion Theater, presented over another television network. And don't forget Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life on radio every Wednesday night. This is George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't be a wacky walker. Don't cross between intersections.